PL and KCL, what we have is something called mesh current analysis. So from KVL, we have mesh current. And from KCL, you have what you call node voltage. These are actually faster and easier shortcuts than the original KVL and KCL. So again, KVL only and KCL only. Okay, how does this work? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take a regular circuit as we did before. Okay, and we're simply going to apply mesh current. Okay, and in a mesh current, we'll simply have a simple um, circuit here and a circuit here. Okay, and our standard um, a standard circuit. Okay, in a standard circuit. Right, we'll just do this. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll have a voltage source just like this. So as I draw in the voltage sources, as I draw in my sources and my resistors, draw it in with me. Um, I thought it, it's easier to follow the instructor than just watch a diagram. So as the instructor, you know, does something, you can follow him. So. Here's my Vs, here's my R1, R2, and R3, okay? Based on this, Vs, I will assume as 10 volts, R1 is go simply going to be, you know, 5 ohms, R2, let's say it's 10 ohms, R3 is 20 ohms, okay? Now, our objective is mesh current. Mesh current, KVL. KVL you analyzed loops, not nodes. So you have loop one, loop two, okay? Simply, you're gonna simply operate a loop. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna assume a current direction of clockwise, or if you want counterclockwise, okay? Just like this. So you have an I1, and you'll have an I2. Just like that. Now, all you do is you compare the two. Step one. Okay, in loop one, which is designated by I1, you will type in loop one, KVL. But the only difference is I1 is greater than I2. Basically what this means is that I2, I1 minus I2 is greater than D zero. So this means basically is that I1 dominates all other Currents. Okay. How does this work? Well, let's go ahead and understand what this means mathematically. Okay. So this is good as qualitatively. Now understand what this means mathematically. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and put some of the volts around the loop is equal to zero. Okay. What this means is we're going to usually adopt a second sign interval. So plus V1, plus V2, just like that, okay? We generally adopt the first sign, second sign. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use first sign. And the reason why we wanna use first sign this time, and it really doesn't matter which sign you use, is because most of the places that you go operate off the first sign. And secondly, um, you'll get a lot of negatives and we wanna just get rid of the negatives, right? We don't want to deal with negatives, and you forgot the negative sign there. So the first sign is minus, plus, plus. So here is minus Vs plus V1 plus V2 is equal to zero. Now this is our source, this is our this is our resistor. So our resistor is always IR, right? So what we'll say is source is minus Vs plus. I1, R1. Okay. Now here is plus V2. But normally you're used to seeing I3. There is no I3. There's only I1 and I2. So I1 minus I2 is the dominating current times I R2 is equal to zero. You're going to end up with minus Vs plus I1 R1 minus, I'm sorry, plus 
I1 R2 minus I2 R2 is equal to 0. If you plug in your values, you're going to get minus 10 plus I1 R1, which is 5, plus I1 R2, which is 10, minus I2 R2, which is 10. That's equal to 0. Okay, so that's minus 10 plus 15 I1, because 5 times 10 is 15, minus 10 I2 is equal to 0. So 5 I1 minus 10 I2 is equal to 10. That's equation 1. Okay? Now you have to derive equation 2 for loop 2. Loop 2. KVL. I1, I'm sorry, I2 now dominates I1. Why? Because in loop 2, which is here, this is loop 2, this is going to dominate any other current. Okay? So I2 is greater than I1 means that I2 minus I1 is greater than 0. This is dominating now. Okay? So you simply write the equation as that corresponds to the circuit. Okay? So because there's no I3, again, we will adopt, we will say here, sum of the volts around the loop is equal to zero. So that's, and we're going to use the first sign convention. Okay, the first sign convention. First mm -hmm. sign conventions, as we go around clockwise around this loop, this is going to drop. So this is dominating now. This is no longer valid here. So this is the new V2, and it's going to drop from high to low. Drop V3, high to low. First sign convention, first sign as I travel. So it's going to mean, it's going to say V2 plus V3 is equal to zero. How do we get there? plus V2 as I travel, plus V3 back to the original, back to the original is equal to zero. So I2, R2 plus I2, R3 is equal to zero. If you plug in your values, uh, if I did this right, no, I did this wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go back here, I'm did, I did this wrong. If this dominates, this is I2 minus I1, because it's dominating I1, times R2 plus I2, R3 is equal to 0. So what happens now is I2, R2 minus I1, R2 plus I2, R3 is equal to 0. All you now do is a plug in your values. Your R2 is 10, your R3 is 20. Okay? So you simply plug in I2 times 10 minus I1 times 10 plus I2 times 20 is equal to 0. Okay? If you're running out of space, one of the tricks, even though you're supposed to work from really left to right, one of the tricks I do is you simply take this and you kind of draw an arrow this way. And this is kind of the starting point here, right? So we want to start here. We want to kind of end here. So as you plug in your values, you get minus I10. I'm sorry, minus 10I1. And you get plus 30I2 is equal to 0. OK? And then what you do is you simply solve two equations two unknowns, and you get your answer. This is the mesh current analysis. What we're going to do is we're going to do a second example. This would be example one. Uh, we're going to do an example two shortly.